Kentucky Derby Festival tradition. Extended coverage of Race Day Live. Hey, welcome back to Race Day Live. You are looking at a picture from WLKY Chopper HD. The runners are coming through the tunnel and Churchill Downs. Sorry, that's what you're looking at this morning. We've got the runners heading our way at the finish line at Lynn Family Stadium. We cannot wait to see them. But more importantly, we have our winner of the wheelchair race. Congratulations to Matthew Porterfield of Knoxville, Tennessee. Matthew, how are you feeling? Good, great. It's awesome. Good, good weather today, and I, I couldn't have had a better race. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. So your finishing time was what? 55 minutes, 52 seconds. Where does that rank in in your normal times? Uh, it's a little bit slower. I've been off this year, just not had a lot of time to train. But it's actually really good for for this this race. I think I've had about 52 minutes before, I think. But it's been it's really good. Mm -hmm. So you just actually recently ran a race uh, not long ago, right? Yeah, I, I, this is my third race this year. I've been in. Knoxville and Charleston, South Carolina, then this race. I got some more coming up in Michigan and Boulder, Colorado. All right. And um, have you done this um, many before? Uh, yeah, this is probably my 15th or 16th time doing this one. Yeah. What do you enjoy most about this one? Uh, the crowd. The crowd's great. I like going through Churchill Downs. It's awesome. Going up and down through the, through the hills and uh, just the area is awesome. The people is great and a good crowd to get you going whenever you need it. Let us get a look at that medal. says 2022 Kentucky Derby Festival Mini Marathon. Do you like it? Love it. It's good. I like it. I'll have a bunch of medals at home. This is one of the bigger ones, so I like it. Yeah. All right. Absolutely love it. Matthew, congratulations to you. Finishing 55 minutes, 52 seconds. And here shortly, we are going to see our first runner cross the finish line. We'll send it back to you guys. All right, Carrie, thank you so much. Hey, we're at the finish line looking over where Carrie is right now. Uh, Lynn Family Stadium, it's a fabulous site, and I've got a fabulous guest with me right now, Damaris Phillips from the Food Network. She is our own local and national celebrity. <laughs> She's going to be at the finish line greeting the runners and cooking for them in the GE Appliances Kitchen and Runners Reunite area. Exciting to have you here this morning. You know, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to be here. I've run the many a couple of times, um, but this morning it feels good to just be watching. A spectator? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot of pressure to run, I'm sure. So what are we going to be cooking up today? So um, they have a few different fun um, smoothies. So after you run, you want something that's going to be like good for your body. So there's four different types of smoothies. I'm also um, making some on the other side of healthy, um, derby pie croissants and then bourbon snack mix. Oh, wow. So festive and fun. Very and Kentucky. Exactly. All right. And so, so you've run this before. Tell me how you felt when you finished. Um, you, you know, I mean, are you ready to just sit down, <laughs> collapse? Or are you like, OK, I'm ready to party. Let's get the show on the road. So I I never thought to have like a car waiting. So I would finish and be like, OK, I guess I'm going to walk home, which I oh, think yeah. actually. No, it's not very far. <laughs> okay. You know, everything's close in Louisville. So I think like you finish and you're ready to relax. But what I love about how they have it set up this year is that it's so festive like it yeah. just really feels so fun down here and you can kind of cool down and come have a snack and um, yesterday people had the chance to when they signed up to get everything for the mini they could kick a soccer ball and there's gonna be a, a giveaway there's like giving away a laundry set from GE appliances so it really it's like very festive and very fun and so I was just telling you that I've most recently seen you judging on guys mm -hmm. grocery games and you're I mean she's on so many Food Network shows <laughs> you, you can't miss her um, but to be a part of something local in your hometown has got to be just as cool I think it's more cool so I still live in Louisville all of the time I travel for work and um, most recently we built a studio kitchen um, in our guest house so that we have a GE appliance studio kitchen where we film um, local shows and can do demos and it all takes place here in Louisville because it's really important to stay. And I was reading um, in the information booklet for what you're doing today you're also going to be making TikToks is that right? Oh absolutely I'm just a 
I was going to say I'm a TikTok sensation, but that was a total <laughs> lie. <laughs> but social media is such a fun way to connect with people. It is. It's, it's entertaining, and you can get information out there, and it, it makes people feel good. So maybe we'll do some TikTok dances. Who knows? <laughs> oh, I think I hear somebody hear, coming. We hear cowbells. Oh, it's another wheelchair racer coming this to is, the finish line. This is great. What We've a seen great two crossover. I know. It really is cool. It's so fun. What, well, who's on his way? <gasps> I'm hearing from our producer. This is oh, great. The, min the mini winner is also on the way. No way. You, I was never in any chance of winning. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the endurance it takes to win this thing? No. They're, they're like sprinting at this point, passing right now Louisville Slugger Field, a few minutes still from the finish line, but already, I mean, Erica said they took off at exactly at seven today, so they are running at a clip out there. That's very exciting. I'm going to run next year. GE. Are you? Yeah. Oh, GE. Good. So we do a partnership. I know it's GE Appliance's first year of sponsoring it, mm -hmm. but I think they sign on for three years. So next year, maybe. And then are you going to cook after you run? <laughs> no, absolutely not. But I would eat a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get somebody else out here cooking up the croissants for you. Very good. All right, so glad to have you out here oh, with us, thanks. Maris. It's, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy. Okay, good. All right, well, we're going to check back in with Erica. Erica, here it comes. The first finisher on their way. Tell us about it. Yeah, absolutely. We are taking a live look uh, via our WLKY Chopper HD. And we just see him booking, booking it this morning. Uh, we've been tracking several of these racers, but this is a, looks to be our leader right here. Going to be crossing the finish line here any moment now. Talk about a great race time, and you can see people along the route cheering them on. That's one of my favorite parts, is, is being able to see the folks that come out with the signs, cheering on their friends. Some of them just come in to watch the show and uh, encouraging those racers, those runners. We've been tracking them all along our route and uh, they're getting ready to turn here onto Witherspoon here in just a second. You can see going under the bridge, but uh, being tracked as, as we speak and we're going to see our finisher cross the finish line and what an incredible feeling that must be. You know, a lot of these folks have worked for months and months training. They travel, they incur the cost of, uh, of doing this and to be able to accomplish this this morning on such a spectacular day. Like we said, they started at seven this morning and eight thousand racers participating in this. We've watched them uh, from our vantage point where Mo Rowe is, Mo Rose is along 11th and Broadway. Our Andrew Chernoff is there at Churchill Downs. We've watched the racers come through the tunnel and up that pathway and along the route this morning. And hopefully they're going to be able to celebrate Suzanne uh, later today, yeah. maybe take a nap, lots yeah. of water. Certainly. And, uh, you know, big day for so many of these folks. And, you know, we were talking about this is the leader that you're looking at right now. If you're just joining us, this is the person that is going to be crossing that finish line and is uh, the mini contender here. And we were watching Erica, this guy take off and he has been out ahead with a sizable lead for I think the entire 13.1 miles. He has just been absolutely hauling it. And you can see he does not look like he has missed a step here at this point. He is still keeping up with an incredible pace. And of course, so many of these athletes do this. You know, we were talking to one person who was running uh, his 200th marathon. So this is again the mini marathon finisher that we're watching, who I believe is on Witherspoon is going to be turning soon. So we're it's so cool to see from WLKY Chopper HD everyone running on the interstates here. There's still some vehicles obviously on the other interstates, but right now with a live look conditions were perfect temperatures right now at 61 degrees in the downtown area. And we are watching this runner continue to keep that incredible pace. And Erica, here we go. Look at him go picking up steam about to cross that finish line. Wow. What a spectacular event this morning. He has been trucking it absolutely. And finishing strong, hands in the air, applause. Wow, what an accomplishment there. We'll let him catch his breath and maybe we can speak to him. Let's listen in. All right, we'll get him there in just a All second. Right, we are walking with the winner. We're getting in front of him. 
We're going to we're going to talk to him as soon as he gets into the tent. I have been told we're going to let him catch his breath. We're going to walk with him to the media tent. The crowd is continuing to applaud him. So he's going to go get his medal. He's going to take a picture. And then right after the break, we will get our official interview with the winner of the 2022 KDF Mini Marathon. See you after the break. Hey guys, welcome back. We are with the winner of the mini marathon. It's Jarrett Mattingly, 24 years old of New Haven, Kentucky. Jarrett, congratulations. How are you feeling? Pretty good. I mean, the weather was perfect. The crowd was amazing. It was challenging, but you know what? It was awesome to go through Churchill Downs. Got a little motivation through there with Derby next weekend. And it's my first half marathon, and I wanted to do it at Louisville because I'm from this area. So pretty awesome. You, is, did you say this is the hardest you've done? Uh, yeah, I ran in college and did the 10K, so I was like, I enjoy the long distance, but nowhere near 13 miles. So, you know, it was new, optimistic, and came in here and had some fun, and it worked out pretty well, and I enjoyed it, but it was hard. Were you anticipating winning? Did you know how good your time was going to be today? Uh, I had a race like three weeks ago that set me up pretty well, but you never know. You respect the competition around here. I mean, you never know who's going to show up, and the running community is so great because you're pushing each other. I was a little shocked that I was leading from the very beginning. I was like, well, this might be a little challenging in mile seven in the middle with your being alone, but I just went with it. And the biker guys, hey, I give it props to them. They were get, they were keeping me motivated, so it was awesome. <laughs> well, you also mentioned that the crowd today was spectacular. Yeah, it was awesome. Like, just seeing, like, all the different organizations out, like, one of the... Um, 
I don't know, it was FCA, like I think was out there, and they were just so awesome. They were just handing out water and just cheering me on. So it's good to see the little people come out and cheer on the community. So it's awesome. Well, you really pulled away. There was no photo finish there. Uh, nobody has crossed the finish line in second place just yet. Uh, but, you know, I want to point out your dad came over here yeah. and your little niece. She's adorable. Your oh, yeah. dad, he got a little emotional. Yeah, it was awesome. I didn't have any family out there until the finish because I knew they were going to be here. And it was awesome to give him a high five and see how happy. Just having the, like, they're proud and I'm proud to have them too, so. All right, I just want I just want to ask Dad how he's feeling because Dad, yeah. you're kind of teary eyed. How what is uh what's getting you so emotional about Jarrett finishing first? Well, he put a lot of hard work in it. As a former track official, I knew the athletes had put the hard work in to do what he wanted to do. I competed in this one time, didn't really train for it, but I enjoyed it. I wish I had come back and done it this year, but I wanted to be here on the finish line. Got two more on the track, a daughter and a son-in-law, so we're going to enjoy this day. Very much special day. Aww, congratulations. Thank it's you. a family affair. You heard that. He's got two more he's cheering on. Yeah. And then, of course, we just got to give a little shout-out to baby girl because she's as cute as can be. Congratulations, Jared. Thank All so right. We'll send it back to you guys as we wait on the rest of the finishers to cross the finish line. Yeah, hey, Lauren Adams reporting live right now along Maine and Floyd. We are just a few blocks from where Carrie is right now at Lynn Family Stadium. This was actually the starting point, but the way the race course is designed this year, folks will actually have to circle past us again as they make their way to Lynn Stadium. So you talk about real estate. Jody Moffitt and I, my photographer, have some good real estate this morning. We saw that man that Carrie interviewed just about maybe 15 minutes ago, and we've seen in, since then maybe 30 more runners making their way one step closer to the finish. This is what it all comes down to. Two years of waiting and countless training. When you get to this point, your body is about to give up. You are mentally exhausted. But you know what the good news? You are a couple blocks away from meeting your goal and you have cheerleaders all along this route. We have seen so many people. They brought their kids out, their dogs. They're holding up signs. We have a couple people that are waving cowbells out here along Main Street. And that's really the energy and the enthusiasm for complete strangers coming together after a two-year hiatus. I got to tell you guys, it is pretty incredible. So now, as you can see right now here, oh, we got another woman. We have seen, we have not yet uh, seen our first female cross the line, but by my estimate, that would be the second place woman's finisher that we just saw cross. Another woman, she would be probably third if she keeps up this pace. And as you can see, there are people coming up and down really physically exhausted at this point, but trying to push themselves as much as they can to get that medal, to make that personal best. Almost there, how you feeling? Great. He's feeling great, I got a thumbs up from him. And that's really incredible. We have seen so many people just cheering, thumbs up. Let's see how this guy's doing. How are you feeling? Almost there. Feeling good? Thumbs up, feeling good? He says he, he says he says he doesn't have long to go, but I'll tell you what, a couple a couple miles more. All right, so we're going to stay here on Maine and Floyd and enjoy uh, the energy here, the runners as they get really close to reaching that goal. For now, let's send it back to you. All right, and uh, we're taking a live look right now at our female leader this morning. She is trucking it as well. Look at her go, racing along, and she should be coming across that finish line here any second now. We saw our uh, male finisher just moments ago, and look at her picking up steam as she's getting ready to cross that finish line. What a big congratulations to all of our finishers this morning. We'll find out more about her in just a second as she crosses. There she goes. Congratulations. Excellent job there. By my calculation, about an hour and 17 minutes, an hour and 18 minutes, she needs to sit down and take a breath. And uh, she's earned every bit of that. So congratulations to her. We talked just moments ago with our first male finisher, uh, Jarrett Mattingly. He had a time of one hour and eight minutes. We also spoke earlier with our wheelchair finisher, our first one, Matthew Porterfield. He's actually won. He won in 2009 and 2012, winning again this year with a time of 55 minutes, 52 seconds. A big congratulations to all of our racers this morning, more than 8,000 of them coming out in really nice temperatures, sunshine. Don't go anywhere. We're going to have more on the race coming up after the break.
Hey, welcome back. 821 in the morning. You're taking a live look at our racers who are continuing to go throughout the route this morning. We've already had our first finisher for the mini marathon, female and male, as well as our wheelchair racer as well. We're continuing to see a lot of these runners booking it through the streets, making their way to Lynn Family Stadium where they're across the finish line. We want to check in now with our Andrew Chernoff. He's live at Churchill Downs where the racers were coming through. Andrew, I feel like you have one of the more fun spots to watch all of these racers. And we're curious because we saw Forrest Gump earlier, two of them, and we're wondering if you have seen Forrest Gump come through because we like this guy. Yes, we did see Forrest Gump come through here a while ago. Gave him a fist pump, actually, rooting him on. This is a really great spot to watch these incredible runners that are performing well out here. They're very excited to get done with this hill. I think, is that fair to say? The hill's almost over, everyone. Yeah, everyone's very excited. And it's pretty cool for everyone here as well because this is, of course, Churchill Downs. So you know they're running through here with the twin spires in the background. Well, horses have been on this track all day. How's everyone feeling? Great. Doing great, doing great. Good stuff. You guys all doing good? So this is really neat. They, they've run underneath this tunnel and they're very happy to be done with. From California. Well done, everyone. It, everyone's been in great spirits. We've seen some pretty cool outfits here as well along this route. You have a lot of college support. Here's an IU fan right here and got, got the hats on as well, those runners right there. How's everyone doing? Awesome. Good stuff. Love hearing it. It's been a lot of smiles that are here running out of this tunnel this morning. We've seen a few people with like those horse heads that they're wearing as hats running through here because you've got to get in the derby festivities for that. We've actually also seen two people with suit jackets. Impressive stuff, especially running a mini and marathon on a day like today as well. And it's pretty cool, too. You just see, ever since really about maybe 40 minutes ago, we've seen this constant flow of people running through here. So excitement here at Churchill Downs. There's excitement where Carrie Grace is as well. And Carrie, we're going to send it to you because this place is rocking. How's it on your end? Andrew, we are with the first place female finisher of the mini marathon. This is Caroline Gosser. Caroline, congratulations to you. How are you feeling? Um, I'm still a little like shaky because I didn't honestly think I could pull that off. Like there's a lot of talented runners here in Louisville and it was like, okay, I've got to be on my A game and my legs like didn't feel super great all week. So I was a little worried going into it this morning, but honestly, like the crowd energy and like seeing people that have like been in my like running life for like the past 10 years like really like carried me through and like my high school coach and his wife are out here which like I like finished and like just started bawling into his arms because like he knows how hard I work for this and like how hard I worked for like 10 years to get here and like my parents are out here and people I run with at run club so it was just like I couldn't not do it because I have so much support behind me and I wanted to make them proud. <laughs> yeah, that was a special moment. I actually got it and posted it on Twitter, but I saw you just start kind of boohooing. And um, what? tell me what those emotions were in that moment. Yeah, I mean, you're like adrenaline's going and like it has been since 5 a.m. when I woke up this morning, but um, he wasn't able to be at my last half, but I always like talked to him the night before and then like the, the morning of and like he knows me like in and out probably better than like 99% of people in my life <laughs> so it was just like I don't know the past like 10 years all just came out at once <laughs> yeah I feel that a lot of people you know saw you sort of sit down at the finish line were, were your legs starting to give out or was that your plan to sit down at the finish line or did that just happen um I didn't do that after a lot of races just because like you need to catch your breath and like I got a side stitch the last like four miles and it got really bad the last two and like at that point you're just like oh I don't know if I can like do it but then you're just like well you know I'm here and I can't give it up now so it's just like I needed to like really catch my breath. Yeah well you pulled it off so what is the post race game plan? Are, do you have a meal you're gonna eat, a restaurant you're gonna go to, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna let my stomach settle down a little bit. I feel like, think most runners know like that like post race tummy just is not the greatest thing <laughs> in the world <laughs> but um I'm actually in med school and I take my first board exam in like less than a month. So I have to go home and study as bad as that sounds. Like I have to put in at least a couple hours before I go celebrate. So <laughs> not the best post-race plan, but I got to like, you know, 
running doesn't really pay the bills. <laughs> oh man, I get it. Caroline, congratulations to you. Caroline is right here from Louisville. She's our first place female finisher today and you heard it, she's gonna go study for medical exams. So that's how she's celebrating today, you guys. Yeah, Caroline making me think uh, maybe need to do more medical school and winning the mini marathon this morning for the females. Wow, talk about impressive there. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have more race coverage on the other side. Hey, welcome back everyone to WLKY's coverage of the mini and full marathon. It's not only race day on the ground, it was race days in the skies for the great balloon race, which was safe and landed here at Champions Park, where I am right now with Jerry Copas, the pilot, and Taylor, the passenger. We're going to see if we have opposing views of the flight in the Mirazon view, or in, in the Mirazon balloon, I should say. So from the pilot's view, Jerry, how was the flight? Fabulous. What a great way to kick off Derby Week. We had a wonderful flight today, landed the Mirazon balloon right here at the Target. Taylor was on her first balloon ride today. So, Taylor, was it as smooth as Jerry says? I'm not going to give you what you're looking for. It was smooth <laughs> sailing. It was beautiful skies. We had great, great people come out and obviously the best pilot around. So do you have any fear of heights whatsoever? I don't know. <laughs> at any point in time, were you like, we actually are getting a little higher than I'm comfortable with? Not at all. In fact, I was like, let's get higher. All right, awesome. So, all right. So, Jerry, let's talk a little bit about the gondola, right? This is what about four feet across four or five feet across by three four wide about that yes and it's large enough for two four three people to stand in you don't really need a lot of room in there you're not getting there for a barn dance you're just in there to stand and watch the, the scenery go by but there's also a couple of uh, of propane tanks in there as well so there's so there's not a lot of room so you got to really provide a nice smooth flight yes yeah, so we've become very close on our <laughs> balloon flights <laughs> taylor and i yeah. right yes, all right we have. so so taylor are you putting in for next year's balloon flight as well I would, but you know, I gotta let somebody else get the chance to do it because it was just so great. But you know, who knows? I may pay. 
Let me say C again, Jerry. Who knows? I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> uh, you know what, guys? I've covered the Great Balloon Race for a very long time, and I've yet to be a passenger in one of the in, in one of the balloons. So, oh. Jerry, hint, hint, wink, wink. You know, now we're a lot more wireless than we used to be in years past, and so I'd I'd, I'd like my go in, in that gondola, mm. especially with Jerry, because Jerry, how long have you been doing this? Forty years. Right. I was only a child when I started. I can't possibly be that old, okay? And he's still here to talk about it <laughs> here in 2022. Let's talk. Uh, so we had a safe, a fun, great balloon race. By all accounts, everyone associated with the Mirazon balloon thinks you guys got really, really, really close. Perhaps close enough to win this thing. An announcement's coming up a little bit later this morning. Once we get that, we'll uh, definitely give you the details of just who won. But hey, you know what? It was safe. It was fun, and those are the best things to come uh, from the Great Balloon Race. So with that said, we're back here on the ground at Champions Park. On the ground following the race is our own Lauren Adams. She's on Main Street at what was once the start line, and now, Lauren, about, what, mile 12 or so? Let's send it back over to you. That's exactly right, Matt Milosevic. Somebody studied their race map. I like that. I could have used you this morning when I parked 16 blocks away and then I realized where the starting line was, but we made it here. And what's incredible is these people are about to, as you just touched on, Matt, make it to the finish line. They are about a mile and some change from Lynn Family Stadium where they're putting everything on the line. Two years of waiting, months and months of training. And really what we've seen before is we've seen those elite runners in the past half hour, right, make it past this starting point. But now we're starting to see the people that have trained for this, the people that are amateurs, if you would, not the professional racers. And it's really rewarding. We saw one guy that had a shirt that said, I'm Nick. And as he ran by, everybody said, hi, Nick. All right, so take a look at these people. How you doing? How you feeling? We're good, okay. How about you guys? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, this guy's doing it, okay. It's really, really incredible. Even if you're not a runner, the camaraderie you see out here, and I've met a bunch of really great cheerleaders, but perhaps no greater cheerleader right than the dad. There's a guy out here running today. He's 32 years old. He's a first time runner and his name is Steven. So I guess, of course, who was on the sidelines, mom and dad. And I want to bring in Steve Sr. right now. And you got up really, really early. Yes. Why? Because I wanted to support my son and let him know that we really care. And this is a very challenging thing for him to do. Yeah. So we just, me and my wife came out. She's down there hiding. But she's, uh, not, she's not camera friendly. <laughs> That's OK. Yeah, so um, me, his best friend, we all came out here to show our support. We came up from Nashville to show our support for this run. And I love that. And you've had to go to the bathroom for a while now, but you're not going <laughs> to risk it, right? You and I talked about that. Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm locked in on them, focused down so I can see them come by. And like I said, this is a very proud moment for us. I love it. It doesn't matter how old your kid are, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm retired uh, military, so I used to run little, but not like this. This is crazy. This is really an yes, incredible accomplishment. Well, we thank you for your service and keep on cheering. That's what this is all about today, right? We're finding awesome people along the finish line, moms and dads, friends, just trying to cheer on anybody, really strangers. How are you guys doing? You're so close. You're so close. Are you feeling okay? She said, ah. I said, you're so close. You're so close. And she said, no, I'm not. How are you guys doing? Long way to go. Okay, these must be our full marathoners. How are you guys feeling? Thumbs up. Thumbs up for my girl there. All right, let's send it back to you guys. I want Lauren to like come to my house in the morning and wake me up. She's such an encourager, right? Get up, get up best cheerleader ever as we continue to look here at Churchill Downs, folks coming up, folks crossing the finish line. You know, what strikes me, Suzanne, is how many people actually have a smile yes. on their face as they're running. Like, That's because they're finishing. <laughs> they're smiling as they're crossing the finish line. Erica. And the weather is so nice too. How could you not smile? You know what? We had really good weather and I think it's kind of nice that the sun is not beating down on yeah. all of these runners here because that can be kind of sapping your energy. So we have kind of overcast conditions, kind of a mixture of clouds and sunshine. We want to go ahead and send it over to Churchill Downs where Andrew Chernoff is. He's an awesome cheerleader too. 
<laughs> yeah, Jamie and Elena are with me now. First of all, love the shirts. We'll run for bourbon. Yes. <laughs> How's it going so far out there? Uh, we're, we're still going. We're still so going. hopefully bourbon's at the end. Absolutely. I'm sure it is for a lot of people, of course. What's it like to be here inside Churchill Downs? Fun. It, it, it got another wonderful. bump of energy just to run through all this. Yep, it's that, great. Yeah. yeah. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. Good luck, everyone, today. Thank the rest you. of the way, okay? Thanks. Yeah, this Thank is you. this is the tunnel as they are getting ready to go here at Churchill Downs. Uh, they're just, Jamie and Elena, a couple of the people here that are running through this tunnel uphill. A lot of these people, as soon as they get through here, say, man, it's great to be on flat ground again because this tunnel is steeper than expected when you're running through it. We've seen that all day long. How is everyone doing today? And it's pretty cool too. You hear a lot of people as soon as they walk through here with their phones, they'll they'll say out loud, this is really cool because the twin spires are right in the background when they turn to the right right here. Everyone's so excited. First timer. Awesome. Love it. Nice job. Nice job. Pretty cool stuff. Everyone is so excited and they said it right there. It's a second win when you get here inside Churchill Downs. This is in between mile marker seven and eight. There's every, hey, Patty, someone says hello to Patty out there. Uh, but this is mile marker seven and eight. So this is sort of that point in the mini marathon where you're over halfway. This is that point when you're starting to get a little tired, but this is also that point when you're rejuvenated because of the location of where you are. This is Churchill Downs. And what's really neat about this is that the horses are on the track. You see them in the background as these awesome folks are doing a great job running through this place. So it's pretty exciting stuff as they make their way here at Churchill Downs. One last time for everyone right here. How's everyone doing? A lot of high moms out there as well. We'll send it back to you all that way. Andrew, I'm always impressed with the people who will stop mid-race and talk to us. Uh, maybe they want to catch their breath. Or, yeah. I don't know. Either way, we appreciate it. Suzanne, I saw somebody just a few minutes ago running with their cell phone up to their face. They look like they were either FaceTiming somebody or maybe doing a Facebook Live. Or Listen, maybe I'm wanna... impressed that someone <laughs> has the athleticism to run the mini marathon or the full marathon and also take a selfie. Right. Or, oh, look, look at, this. at this guy showing off here. Come on now. Come oh, on now. my goodness. Overachiever. Overachiever. <laughs> Good for him, though. And we saw who Lauren was talking to. He was able to do a high five and yeah. he was kind of waving his arms up and down. I love that people still have so much energy despite the fact that they have run a dozen or so miles. Certainly really impressive. impressive. Yeah. And the cloud impressive. cover, too, has to be kind of nice for him as well. I would think so because it's, you know, temperatures right now in the lower 60s, and you can see all of the awesome signs there telling someone that you can do it. You got to have the support out there because this is grueling for some people. And uh, you can see some of the shirts are coming off, too, Erica. <laughs> That's when you know stuff's getting real, when you start to lose articles of clothing. Are we still looking at the chance of a possibility of rain? We'll get to that in just a second yeah. after the break. We'll talk about that. Don't go anywhere more of the race coverage coming up on the other side.
Hey, welcome back. Our race day live coverage this morning. You can see the racers, some of them running, some of them walking, continuing along the streets this morning. We've had our first finishers cross the finish line there for the mini marathon, the female and male in good spirits, both of them excited, just excited to be here. And we've got lots of smiles and thumbs up as people pass us. And Suzanne, as we continue to look at these pictures from Churchill Downs, we've really had really pleasant weather this morning. Temperatures in the lower 60s, Erica, and you can see we have everyone for the most part are wearing shorts and short sleeves. So uh, we have seen maybe a couple of sprinkles across the region. And right now this is a live look at the finish line. We are going to be on the lookout for the potential to see some strong storms as we head into tonight. So certainly we want to keep you posted about that. The bulk of the day should be mainly dry with just the risk of maybe a couple of spotty showers out there. Temperatures right now in the downtown area right around 63 degrees, but temperatures will be able to soar into the lower 80s as we make our way into your afternoon hours. It's also going to be a breezy day for us. We're going to hold on to the chances for storms tonight with those storms moving out early on Sunday morning. So we'll be keeping that in mind as we uh, head throughout the day. But right now for the marathon, certainly we've got some fantastic weather. I know we want to go out to Mo Rose, who is for the first time ever on the Big Four Bridge. And that is a new part of the race course this year. So Mo, what are you seeing out there? We're seeing runners come by, actually uh, uh, quite a few. These are the marathon runners, the full marathon runners. They're approaching the Big Four Bridge, uh, and it is a quite a hill if you've ever walked up the Big Four Bridge. But at least you don't have to run through Iroquois Park this year. That's a big change for uh, the course this year. So you're getting away with just one big hill compared to going through all of the ups and downs of Iroquois Park. Now we've got the runners coming through. We did have someone, a pacer moving through here at three hours and 20 minutes. That's about what they'll be finishing at if they keep this pace. You're looking great, stay hydrated. This is very important. About eight to 14 ounces of water or liquids, Powerade, whatever you can every half an hour. So this is a great opportunity to get some water before you head up the Big Four Bridge. By the way, these are three and a half hour uh, marathoners, but the fastest, I got some fun facts for you, the fastest marathon time ever was run by uh, Iliad Kipchoge, two hours, one minute and 39 seconds. Uh, that was one fast Kenyan. Now the oldest marathon, here's a fun fact for you. An annual marathon was the Boston Marathon back in 1897. That was uh, when it started. And our space race, did you know that Tim Peak ran the London Marathon from space in 2016? And Snickers, ladies, did you know that Snickers was originally called the Marathon Bar up until about 1900? And then they did a rebrand, renamed it Snickers. Here's some fun facts for you. I think the Marathon Bar has a really nice ring to yeah. it, actually. You know, maybe we should bring that. You can say, I'm back. gonna do a marathon, <laughs> and it can be <laughs> eating a Snickers bar. <laughs> Exactly, and you want to know what I feel? I feel like it's healthier, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have a quick marathon bar. I feel Absolutely. Good. I feel good about it. We like can all do a marathon then. feel like you're doing something good for yourself. All right, we're continuing to look at yes. uh, the folks coming through Churchill Downs. Look, she's ready. Look at her. She's ready for the derby oh. while she's running. I mean, come on now. Fashion forward right there and look at the fascinators oh erica we've got three ladies with their fascinators on yes oh and they're so enthusiastic <laughs> i love how everyone is so happy to see andrew Chernoff. yes <laughs> oh he's bringing them over up oh. okay your hats, the fascinators. Come yes. on, how great. It's amazing. Yeah. Was that part of the wardrobe today for a reason? Oh, yeah. It was. It's all Mary. Mary planned yeah. it. Yeah. Totally. It, it's part of the derby festivities, yes. is it not? Definitely, yes. definitely. You have to you have to wear a fascinator for a derby. <laughs> how is it going so far today? It's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. It's beautiful course. Yeah. Beautiful neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. And the police officers are nice to look at. Yeah. Very. <laughs> There's a couple of police officers right there. What 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 is it like to be here inside Churchill Downs? Oh, it's very oh, exciting. It's surreal. Awesome. Definitely surreal. Good stuff. This will well, be it's our amazing. slowest time because we got to get pictures of everything. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Stop for interviews like this, right? We're here for the fun of it. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Are you ready for Derby Week? Yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. Good Close. stuff. Well, I, li I like that. That's Thank great. You. Good luck Thank the rest you. of the way, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We got to get some fashion advice from them. They, they've got it going on while they're running in this mini marathon <laughs> marathon today. I'm curious how they have it secured, too. You know they've got to have extra bobby pins in there because they're bouncing all over the 
<laughs> place. All right, we're continuing to look at our racers come through. You know, we've seen folks in costumes. We've seen folks, you know, with their names written on their shirts. We had a, a gentleman running with the American flag just a few moments ago. It's amazing to see, you know, young and old and everybody in between out there this morning. 8,000 uh, folks participating in this race. And look at them go. And, I, you know, it always strikes me how many folks are smiling, giving the thumbs up, putting their hands in the air, really look like they're actually enjoying themselves. You know, many of them have trained for months and months to be able to do this. And a lot of them, you know, you hear their stories and they're really inspiring people who have overcome a lot to get to this place where they can cross that finish line there at Lynn Family Stadium. And what a beautiful place to be able to cross the finish line. And definitely a sense of camaraderie, you know, when you're out there and you're seeing the folks along the race route, cheering on family members, some people just coming out to watch the show basically and encourage folks who are running many of them walking and a lot of folks doing it as a family you know you see families out there and uh, saw a lady a while ago pushing a stroller so uh, it's good for everybody to be able to come on out and we're lucky that we've had such nice weather Suzanne I mean it's really yeah. been pretty good so far today absolutely fantastic and you know everyone you were saying everyone is smiling Erica I think it's because this is a choice to do this and you sign up for it and you're prepared <laughs> for it and today is the day we of course have more live race day coverage coming up right after this break Oh. One hour, 51 minutes, and 40 is. seconds into the race, we see Forrest Gump himself. I'm pretty sure this is our favorite guy so far today. Crossing the finish line. Congratulations, Forrest. You ran and ran and ran. I don't know if he teamed up with the yes, other Forrest. With the Where guy with the, the chocolates. <laughs> because there was a guy in a khaki suit yes. holding a box of chocolates, yes. you guys. And Carrie has got to stop him. Ah, Carrie, Get him. Carrie, we want to talk to him. He's our favorite. <laughs> I got, I got Forrest. Is this going to make me a national celebrity? Yes. So yeah. tell me your real name first. Forrest, Forrest Gump. 
Okay, Forrest, we, you finished the race. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me, why did you decide to dress as Forrest Gump today? Uh, out of costume, I, I am Forrest Gump. If you're Forrest Gump, say your favorite Forrest Gump-esque line. I'm tired. I think I'll go home. All right, Forrest. Thanks for joining us this morning. Congratulations. You know, we've been tracking him. He's not hard to miss, so we've been pretty much tracking him since the beginning of the race. But I'm at the finish line at Lynn Family Stadium, and now you're starting to see lots more mini marathon finishers come across the finish line. Earlier, when those first winners came across, they were leading by a mile, but now we're just starting to see hordes and hordes of people coming across the finish line. But you know, if you've ever wanted to feel inadequate or if you've ever wanted to feel inactive or maybe like you're not doing enough in life, I suggest you stand at the finish line of a mini marathon. Uh, these people are spending their Saturday bettering themselves and I'm just thinking about coffee and donuts. But anyway, so we've got all of the fans lined up cheering on their loved ones. We've seen some kids cross the finish line uh, with their families and their parents. And it's just exciting to see people from all walks of life run something like this. We've seen um, older people, younger people, um, family members, and it's exciting. We've got, let's see, I want to try to get a runner, but the, the, this is the hard part. Actually, this is the hard part. So if we walk over here, we're going to try to cross through the crowd. You see these guys right here. They're handing up vomit bags. <laughs> and a lot of people are grabbing those because when you finish running 13.1 miles, there's a lot of gagging and spitting and some puking uh, because people are they're exhausted. Uh, so maybe we can stop someone who isn't entirely exhausted, but it's tough. These people are just trying to catch their breath. So let's see, do we have anybody who wants to stop? Do you want to stop and talk to us? Oh, that's a no. You want to talk? Let's see. Anybody want to talk? How do you feel? How do you feel? Great. She feels great. This is the hard part, getting people to stop after they've run 13.1 miles. Maybe we should just make our way right over to some of the family members. All right, we got some right here who are waiting on people. You waiting on somebody? She's, is she coming? She's coming. She ought to be around All right, the corner. she's around the corner. We talked to them earlier. They're waiting on their 14-year-old granddaughter. She should be coming around the corner. Anybody else waiting on somebody? we're with them. You're with them? Who are you waiting on? My daughter. Kaylin Gregory. All right. You want to say anything? Say anything to her? Yeah, we're proud of you. Let's do it. How old is she? Uh, 20. She's 20 years old. He's waiting on his daughter. All right, we got more people crossing the finish line right here. I talked to the male and female finisher earlier. They were both really proud of their times today. The female finisher, in case you missed it of Louisville, 25 years old, a second year medical student. And when I asked her, how is she going to celebrate her win? She said, well, man, I got exams to study for. So her mind was clearly on something else. But the um, athleticism of everybody out here today is remarkable. And I'm just proud to see people getting back to normal and getting back into the KDF mini marathon. Let's see if we can stop somebody. Congratulations on finishing. They're with GE Appliances. We got somebody carrying a flag back here. We're now at the one hour 56 mark. So a lot of these people um, are around the two hour pace, which is what we were hearing when we first got out here this morning. We were hearing that a lot of people were expecting their loved one to finish around the 9 a.m. mark, and that's right where we're approaching. So I think that's why we see so many people who are getting their cameras out, because this is right at the time they expected them to finish the race. All right, with that, we are going to toss it to break. We will have more live coverage of the KDF Marathon and Mini Marathon right after this. You're watching WLKY.
right now on WLKY, a Kentucky Derby Festival tradition. Extended coverage of Race Day Live. Welcome back to our Race Day Live coverage of the Kentucky Derby Festival Marathon and Mini Marathon. 8,000 participants running along the downtown route this morning. Most of them smiling and giving us a thumbs up. We've seen plenty of those Mini Marathon racers finishing and crossing the finish line. Excited to have completed such an awesome task. We want to take it live right now to pictures coming to us from India right there that is our leader of the marathon and he does not seem to be slowing down one inch thank you to WLKY chopper HD who is following that leader and uh, we'll continue to follow him as he crosses that finish line he's taking sips of water as he runs hydrating very very important we have teams positioned throughout the race route they've been with us all morning long following these runners and walkers and and congratulating them along the way. We have teams of reporters and anchors covering you from the start all the way through the route until the finish. And you can see right there, that is our leader for the marathon. We tracked, of course, the leader for the mini marathon as he crossed the finish line, as well as our female leader. And we were there as the wheelchair uh, racer crossed the finish line as well. So big congratulations to all of the folks who are running and walking this morning. All 8,000 of them deserve a big high five and a big congratulations. We want to check in now with our Lauren Adams. She is live for us along the parade route and uh, she's been cheering everybody as they've uh, been running past. How's it going, Lauren? Yeah, did you just hear that? Actually, um, there's people that have been waiting now for about two hours to see their loved one go by. I'm not sure who it was, but somebody ran by and they were definitely a crowd pleaser. So right now, as you know, we are about two hours into the race. So we're really starting to see a large field of these runners come back in. It has been a steady stream like this here along Maine and Floyd for probably Erica about the past 45 minutes. And as we talked about earlier, there's nothing better than cheerleaders. So I found one of the littlest, but probably cutest cheerleaders out here. And this is Evie, right? And you're six years old. Who are you here for today? Mary Bainbridge. Okay, so Aunt Mary, do you know what she's wearing? A black tank top. And she has somebody with her. You're on the lookout for somebody else too, right? Yeah. Marcus, who is her boyfriend, who has a pinkish orangish t-shirt. Okay, so Erica, if you heard that, we're looking for Mary. She's in a black tank top, and Marcus, who was wearing something pink or orange. So that's who we're here for today. Okay, so when you say, when you see your aunt Mary, and do you like Marcus? Mm, yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay, so you're gonna cheer for Marcus too. When you see Mary and you see Marcus, what are you gonna say? Go, Mary, go, Marcus. Perfect. Go, Mary, go, Marcus. Okay, so we're going to hang out here for, with her for a little bit longer, see who we can see. But look at this. It's incredible. You can see this guy. I want to walk right down here. I don't even know who he's cheering for. I think he's just, are you cheering for anybody or everybody, sir? Everybody. You're cheering for everybody. Come here, come here. This is, you're in the middle. <laughs> All right, you're not in the middle of something. Come on, who are you here for? Uh, my daughter, Alex. Okay. Has she made it down yet? Uh, she's right behind me, so you might uh, might have to forgive me when I get interrupted. I get it. Why is it so important to cheer for everyone else's kids, too? I like that about you. Well, because they're making a tremendous effort that I can't make. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we need we need more dads like this along the... Oh, go. here we go. Let's go, let's go. Last one, last one. That's pretty impressive, Erica, because that's his daughter hasn't even made it to this point yet. And as you heard, he is just cheering everyone along. We love to see this enthusiasm here along Maine and Floyd. It's really, really incredible. Let's send it over to my friend Andrew Chernoff now at Churchill Downs. Hey, Lauren. Yeah, Nancy Herlocker joins me now. Nancy, how many marathons have you done? Uh, 43 today. 43. So this is your 43rd. Yes. Wow. How do you do it? Um, patience. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the secret to doing an event like this? And it's all about pacing and patience, but it, it, training for this has to be just a grind. It takes a lot of time, but it's worth the effort. And if you have good partners, and I know that you all have a training team here, 
pair up with a training team is the best way to start. Absolutely. You just came up through the tunnel. This is the first time you were telling me that you've been inside Churchill Downs. What is it like to be in here? It is the most amazing experience. I have waited for this my entire life, so thank you so much for this wonderful experience. I was going to say, what, what, what came to mind when you walked in here? And obviously, we sort of see the Twin Spires in the background. You'll see them a little bit later on the course, but... I mean, this is a place that you've always wanted to see. Yeah, I, I had a thoroughbred um, right off the track from a boat tendon. And so watching the ponies ever since I was a little girl, this is the thing, right? This is the main event. And I'm so excited to be here. I'm going to even come tonight and watch them run for real. Oh, outstanding. <laughs> outstanding. Opening night is tonight. Gates open at 5 o'clock, by the way. Um, when you're out here, you're obviously wearing the jockey outfit, correct? Yep, sure am. Well, how vital was that to do today? This was keeping my spirits up so that I could make it the whole way. Absolutely. And then once you get up, there's a point, I'm sure, as a runner where you're like, okay, I'm getting a little tired right now, but when I hit this point, we're going to be okay. Yeah. What is that point in a day like today? Um, about mile 21. <laughs> <laughs> so with five miles to go, it's cruise control pretty much. Five miles to go, you can pretty much walk home from there. That's outstanding. Nancy, thank you so much. It was Appreciate lovely it. to meet lovely you. Lovely to meet you too. Thank enjoy, you. Enjoy Louisville, okay? Thank you so much. Awesome. That is Nancy, everyone. She's the best. <laughs> Love the outfit. We've seen a lot of really great outfits today. Here's actually another one right here. Oh, oh yeah. Hi, hi. Here's another Hi. one. Yes, I love it. Like the hats. Nancy, Thanks. thank you so much. Can I get your name real quick? Vanessa. Vanessa. Why was it important to wear, wear this outfit today? Well, my mom passed away from Alzheimer's about five years ago, so all my runs are dedicated to her. And it was as close as I could get to forget-me-nots. And then my daughter put some tattoos on me, so honoring mom today. And it, right there it says, Mom, 1939 to 2016. Yeah. 39 to 2016, yeah. How, how is she pushing you along today? Oh, just, she was a tough lady, determined, and, you know, I just hope that someday I'll be as good as her, so, cool lady. On days like today, why is, why is this so important to you? Oh, just because she was a very spirited lady. Kentucky is a very spirited state, so it just kind of all goes together. Absolutely. And then so, just what's it like to be in here, Churchill Downs, it's Derby Week? It is amazing. It is amazing. I mean, any way you get to get into Churchill Downs, whether it's through the race or the Derby itself, it's just fun. It's awesome. Absolutely. It's iconic. Absolutely. No so, doubt about it. Hey, your mom will be proud of you today, thank okay? Thank you so much. Yep. I appreciate it. Thank you all Absolutely. for being out here. Anytime. Always. Just a lot of incredible marathoners, many marathoners out here today at Churchill Downs, and it's pretty cool to see some of the outfits and hear some of the stories from these people who are competing competing, trying to get some good times, but also in the case of that, running for other people who they've either lost or are fighting certain causes right now. So it's pretty neat to see. Wow, really special stuff out there, Andrew. I love it. And I love the split screen, too, so we can see what you've got going on, as well as what's going on in other parts of the race route. You see right there, this, ladies and gentlemen, is our leader of the marathon, picking up a cup of water, drinking it as he runs. He's had an incredible pace the entire several minutes that we've been tracking him and following him. He doesn't seem to be slowing down at all, uh, really keeping up a good pace this morning. And we're going to continue to track him as he crosses that finish line. We're now, let's see, two hours and almost eight minutes or so into this race. And, you know, we were showing you pictures from Lynn Family Stadium, the finish line there as the mini uh, marathon finishers cross that line and are happy to to do so and we're continuing to track now our marathon runners as well we've got teams lined up throughout the route and they've been checking in this morning with our runners and walkers and congratulating them and i mean honestly suzanne like the weather is i am yeah. I, I can't even imagine better because you've got yeah. that cloud cover mm -hmm. and the temperatures are not bad at all mm -hmm. i think you're so right uh, temperatures are in the lower 60s right now and you can see everyone looks fairly comfortable. We did see some people removing articles of clothing. And Erica, this is where Mo is at the top of the Big Four Bridge. And we were talking about how awesome it is that that is included. Until I remembered, what? there is that huge hill you have to climb to get up to the bridge. <gasps> remember that? You're right. These poor souls are running up that <laughs> as part of a marathon. You know, we were talking about the Churchill Downs incline where Andrew Chernoff is. But on the top of the Big Four Bridge, to get to the Big Four Bridge, you have kind of that spiral yeah. where you go up it and your kids run up it, That's no true. problem. But as a grown up, maybe you don't run up it quite as fast. Man. But these marathon runners with all of their incredible endurance and fitness are running as part 
of their 26.2 miles, they are running up the Big Four Bridge. And you know, you touched on something earlier when you and I were chatting in the break that, you know, we've got so many folks that are coming here from out of town, out of state, and we're really showcasing the best mm -hmm. of Louisville with some mm -hmm. of these places that our runners and walkers are going through. You know, they're able to, to run through Churchill Downs. Like, when do you get an opportunity to do that? Going mm -hmm. through the Big Four Bridge, looking at downtown, seeing both sides of the river. It's really cool to have our city on display in such a beautiful way. And showing off beautifully this morning, Erica. And you can see with another live perspective here, uh, we have 8,000 people that are getting a fabulous workout this morning. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll have more race coverage for you coming up after the break. Two hours and 13 minutes almost on the dot to when this race began. We're continuing to track our runners doing a fantastic job this morning. The Kentucky Derby Festival Marathon and Mini Marathon is well underway this morning. We've already seen a number of finishers for the Mini Marathon crossing the finish line, waving at us, giving us high fives and saying they feel fantastic to have accomplished this. The Big Four Bridge right there taking a look at our folks, our marathon runners who are doing their thing this morning. The weather's been great. It's been beautiful, really no issues to speak of. And we want to check in now with our Mo Rose who has moved around a little bit this morning. Mo, how are things where you are? Oh, I'm hearing that, yeah, the marathon, the marathon winner, the guy who is way ahead is uh, going to be coming over the bridge right now. So we're keeping an eye on the top of the uh, Big Four Bridge as people are coming up. And we're also going to be swinging by and looking for the winner, too, here. Great job, guys. By the way, hey, listen, you got to the top. Who needs a cookie? 
Hey guys, it's National uh, Oatmeal Cookie Day. So who needs a cookie? You made it to the top, you earned it. You guys are burning 100 calories a mile. So make sure you're fueling your bodies. You're doing a great job. This is probably the hardest part. We're just at that halfway point at 13 miles here at the top of the bridge and we're at the hill. It's tough. You guys look great though. Keep it up. And we actually, are we, are we seeing the first, the first running coming back? over the big four bridge nothing yet he's up on the oh yes yeah, so he's on the indiana side hey great job guys great job he's wearing bright yellow so we are going to be watching for him to cross over the big four bridge but man you know they did have hills in the last marathon in iroquois park uh, and then they cut that out. So you thought you were getting away easy, but <laughs> we just walked up this big four bridge and I'm still out of breath trying to get up here. So I can't imagine what it feels like as you're coming on a 13 miles and then you have to go up to the top of this bridge. Great job, guys, keep it up. And we, we are waiting to see the front runner of the marathon coming over the bridge. We're keeping an eye out for him. He is wearing bright yellow. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, Mo, we are actually able to see him because we're doing a split screen right now, and WLKY Chopper HD is oh, over wonderful. the river as we speak, so we're able to track him. It's hard for me to tell from this vantage point. I'm thinking he's like a halfway, maybe halfway through uh, along the bridge there, but let me tell you what, Mo, he is moving. We've been tracking him for like the last, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and he hasn't slowed down. That's what is one of the most impressive parts is the fact that he has kept up this pace. We've seen him drinking water and trucking it along, so you should be seeing him any moment now. What an incredible feeling he has to be experiencing as he is the front runner right now, the leader to cross that finish line for the marathon. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I want to say thank you to Mo Rose for offering oatmeal cookies <laughs> to people who are halfway through Listen, a marathon. Like, <laughs> like, what's the thing that you would crave the most? Maybe not, an oat, maybe not an oatmeal cookie, but either way, <laughs> if somebody wants a cookie, Mo Rose is out there. Hey, I've got mine too that you uh, left for me at the station, so I appreciate you celebrating National Oatmeal Cookie Day as we watch these marathoners. We just yeah. want to say a huge Listen, Congratulations to them. <laughs> Go ahead, Mo. Uh, no, I'm telling you, you are burning calories when you are running. And if you are not eating at least a 100 calorie snack pretty much every two miles, once you hit mile nine, your body is going to hate you by mile 18. That's I'm just trying to help out the runners. I'm being I'm being a good uh, cheerleader. How about that? Love it. Because I am not actually hey, running listen. at all. And I think we have eyes. Oh, we can see them. We can see them coming over. We got the bikers ahead, so they're going to be clearing the way for them. Erica, what are you seeing in the split screen? Yeah, we're, we're seeing him, and it's great to be able to see him from both both vantage points, but you see him there crossing the Big Four Bridge right now. He's just, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but he's just behind that bicyclist that you see right there that's leading the way for him. Yes. And he should be here pretty quickly because he's really, really moving fast, Mo. You see that bright uh, yellow tank top. You certainly cannot miss that. I'm guessing he's probably not going to want to stop and chat with you, Mo. I mean, as cute as you are, uh, he's yeah, probably, yeah. I'm going to let him go. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we'll shout him. I'm Hopefully screaming. We'll Sorry, him. guys. I'm so excited for him. <laughs> we'll catch him He's hopefully on pace once he for, crosses the gosh. finish line. Let's check in now with our Andrew Chernoff there at Churchill Downs. Hey, Andrew. Hey, we are here with um, someone who's 50 years old. Happy birthday. Can we get your name real quick? Joanne Blatchley. Okay, Joanne. I see you got the balloons too I here do. right there. I Happy B-Day, 50 years old. That is outstanding. <laughs> what have people been saying to you along the course? They've been singing. They've been saying congratulations. Happy birthday. It's been fantastic, actually. Even even the police support, they've been singing. It was great. That's outstanding. Uh, I see the whole get up right here. You've got, you got the 50 on the hat, 50 and fabulous, the 2-2. I mean, th this is telling people how to go about this. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank we have you. to go back to Erica real yeah. quick, but happy birthday. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> All right, let's go now to our Lauren Adams, who is live along the route, and she's actually got some finishers with her. Hey, Lauren. Hey, 
Hey, good morning to you. So this is really incredible. All throughout the course of the day, we're finding really nice stories, right? Just a minute ago, there was a woman that slowed down and a complete stranger came up upon her and said, hey, are you okay? He rubbed her back and she said, I'm good. And then he kept going and she kept going. But more so than strangers, there's a lot of people that decided to run this race together. A lot of really good duos, including this father and son. We've got Bill and we've got Aaron. I told you I only put good looking people on TV. All right, so tell me why you decided to do this. Well, it was fun to do a father-son thing. We really had never, he'd never run a mini. So uh, he ran in high school and uh, we started together. We didn't finish together. You obviously, started, you obviously smoked him, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> he got me by about seven minutes. So he's, okay. he's a real runner. So. so what was this like to do this with your dad? Uh, like we said, we decided to run together, but I didn't really see him at all during the race. But uh, <laughs> we're very competitive, so it was it was a challenge, and I'm glad to say I could beat him because honestly, I didn't know at the first <laughs> at the first mile. But uh, it was good to see him ten okay. minutes after me at the finish line. Yeah. So did you did you rag him and say, "Hey, where'd you bend at?" Or what'd you say? <laughs> no, I think I think he knew deep down in his heart that uh, he's 60. I'm only 24, so I got a couple minutes 60. on him. Only 60. I so. think I think you're doing great for 60, and you've got and the the proof is in the medal. You Absolutely. finished. I finished. But I gotta. Um, you called your wife just a minute ago to check Absolutely. in, and you didn't have your cell phone, so I I let him borrow my phone. Right. And what did you say to your wife when she picked up from a number she didn't know? I said I'm at the hospital, <laughs> and I said no 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 I'm just kidding. So. Uh, and then you gave her a plug and told her to watch WLKY. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure it's going to be high ratings. You're going to have high ratings <laughs> on this interview. Absolutely. Congratulations you. to you guys. Thank I you. love to see this. I love to see the families. I love to see the father-son duos and the perfect strangers just coming together on what has turned out to be an awesome race day. Back to you guys. I love it, Lauren. Awesome stuff there. And we're continuing to follow our leader for the marathon. Thank you to WLKY Chopper HD, who is high above this morning. Our helicopter's been all over the place, tracking the balloons this morning, tracking our racers and runners and mar marathon runners, mini marathon runners, everybody in between. And you see this gentleman right here. I can't wait to find out his name and Google him because I'm guessing... This is not his first rodeo, so to speak. One would assume with a stride <laughs> like that, that perhaps this is not the first time this young man has run a marathon. No. He looks quite skilled. Yes. And he has kept up, it seems like to, to us, Erica, just a phenomenal pace with a wonderful stride this entire time. He's been hydrating. Certainly, we've seen a couple of bottles of water, a couple cups of water. And he is, I mean, he is rounding out. We are wrapping yeah. this up. And keep in mind, Starting at 7 o'clock, it's now 9.21 and 47 seconds, and he is close. And certainly it does not appear that he is slowing down at all. I wonder if he's listening to music. You think he's playing a little Eye of the Tiger right now? Getting himself <sighs> pumped up? Hopefully he is. He obviously doesn't need it, whether he's got it or not. Whatever he's doing is certainly working. Hey, we want to give a shout-out to uh, the mini marathon winners who crossed the, the finished line a short time ago. We had uh, Jarrett Mattingly, who was our male finisher. And we also had Caroline. Gosser, who is a Louisville native. She's also in med school. She was our female finisher there for the mini marathon. So huge congratulations to them. We also had our wheelchair racer who crossed over the finish line at 55 minutes, 52 seconds. Matthew Porterfield, he also won, by the way, no big deal, in 2009 and 2012. So this is at least his third uh, winning race here in Louisville as we're continuing to follow our uh, uh, our leader who is trucking along there for the marathon and we've been checking in with folks all morning long because we have teams positioned throughout the race route and one of the coolest things to see is the folks who come out and cheer on family members friends strangers a lot of them who have overcome a lot and coming out cheering on their loved ones and then to talk to the folks who've been able to finish in the sense of accomplishment and and pride that they're able to feel and you know you really see more and more yeah. people coming out this morning as the sun is up yeah. and the temperatures are nice and it's a little bit later in the morning so you can see that finish line was certainly packed with everyone 
everyone cheering him on. And we are very close to his finishing this race, Erica. And you can see the bicycle riders who yeah. are kind of flanking him, who are blowing a whistle, I think, because obviously it gets very crowded towards that finish line because we have all the mini marathon finishers who are obviously many of them have already been wrapping up and done. So they want to make sure that this man has a wide berth so that he can get to that finish line safely and cleanly. That's why you see those two bicycle riders who are also blowing a whistle to kind of clear the space because we've seen people kind of milling about and it's making me a little nervous because I want to say okay excuse me move away <laughs> move away let this guy get through let him get through because he is n basically unstoppable at this point just moving at a fabulous yeah. clip and really almost increasing it looks like in pace as he's rounding out this race and you know it's interesting when you look at the folks that are running on the left side of your screen to see how fa how fast he is and he's been at this pace pretty much the entire time we've been following him he really has not slowed down at all this is quite a a fast pace i appreciate the fact too that he's wearing this bright yellow uh, yes. tank top Helpful. so that we can easily easily spot him uh, we you know we've been tracking him for the last 15 minutes or so as he's booking it and we've got a team down there along the finish line there at Lynn Family Stadium our Carrie Grace and Julie Dolan have been checking in with some of the finishers and the folks that have uh, been able to accomplish this this morning the race kicked off at 7 a.m. pretty much exactly as was planned so we're now you know two hours and 25 minutes or so into this race so a lot of the mini marathon runners have already crossed that finish line and are hopefully already celebrating some of them may be already resting yeah. we also had the uh, balloon race that kicked off this morning and i do want to mention that uh the gentleman that matt milosevic talked to right. is the one that actually ended up winning the race and i think that was the one that we saw yeah with I mean, the with the big cheer yeah that was huge here we go Erica, we are wrapping up. Yep, and uh, you're gonna, we're gonna take a look here at our marathon winner getting ready to cross the finish line. You really hear the excitement and the cheering as people are saying, you've done it, you've accomplished this, and finishing strong. 225. Congratulations, wow, what a feat. There it is, our marathon winner. We'll hopefully check in with him once he's had a chance to catch his breath and drink some water. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break.
Hey, welcome back. You are watching WLKY Race Day Live, and we are with the winner of the full marathon. This is Antonio Markey. Antonio, congratulations. What's in your hand? Old fashioned. And old fashioned, because guess what he said? They tried to offer him water. He said, nope, I want some bourbon, just like a true Kentucky gentleman. All right, Antonio, congratulations. How are you feeling after that big race? Very happy, very happy. It's a very big accomplishment. It was very tough. The weather conditions, they were great, but I was there by myself. So, yeah, my goal was, well, winning. I thought winning would be great. Mm -hmm. I won, so that's great. And great, we also have been at 224. Mm -hmm. But the time was a little bit slower, but okay. I mean, I'm happy. I mean, I tried my best. Yes. So, and I saw many friends from Lexington, mm -hmm. cheering, and also friends from Lobo. And uh, yeah, I love the course too. And yeah, it's a great experience, great yeah. experience. What, so did you run it last year when the course changed? No, last year, I thought I thought that was very, I disturbed my, my, my registration and I thought I, I would race here, but I did it virtual. Uh, for some reason I had to do an extra step online so I didn't get deferred. So I did a virtual, I ran a 5K loop on my house, I, I ran a marathon by myself. <laughs> so, yeah, this year, well, this is great. This is this is the best marathon I've ever ran. Wow. I mean, it's not my fastest, but it's the best. I mean, because of all my friends and I won and many things, but yeah. I can go. So is the crowd good? Yeah, lovely crowd. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, the aid stations, the water, the power aid, really helpful. Drunk uh, two bottles of water. Some power aids, four goose. So yeah. So tell me, what does the marathon winner eat for breakfast? Yeah, you go ahead and sip on that old fashioned. You deserve a drink. Uh, what does the marathon winner eat for breakfast? It depends. Uh, me, I follow many, many suggestions. Uh, Sack Bevan, my friend, my very, my very good, my very good friend, Sack Bevan, a very famous runner too, Olympic trial qualifier. Uh, so yeah. He said he takes pop tart, so yeah, I had a couple of pop tarts and uh, coffee. Yeah, that's what I had today. It depends, but uh, the other marathon I had a bagel. Yeah. And uh, coffee. Yeah, and water. So it depends, but and I had pop tarts on another marathon too. But those are the main things: a little bit of carbohydrates, yes. you know, and uh, some caffeine, you know. So and some water. There you go. Well, Antonio, congratulations to you. Thank you so much for talking to us after 26 miles. You heard him say it, coffee and Pop-Tarts to start the day and bourbon to finish the race. All right, Julie, we'll toss it to you. I'm, I'm liking the sound of an old fashioned, Julie. I'm liking the sound of that too. What a way to finish a race. In fact, when we talked to Damaris Phillips earlier and she was talking about how they were gonna be serving up uh, croissants and, and bourbon trail mix and then old fashions, I was thinking, do marathoners want that after a race? And the answer is yes, they do. So fantastic. We're up here looking over Adam Street. We're in the back parking lot right now of Lynn Family Stadium. We've got a great view of all these runners as they make that final leg to the finish line. We are now two hours, 32 minutes into the race and we just saw that two hour 25 minute 40 second finish by Antonio and it was fantastic the full marathon uh and mini marathon both well underway here at Lynn Family Stadium. You know, the first few runners who trickled in at an hour nine, um, it was fun to see. But now when you get the big crowd and you get all their fans and you see the signs, this is when it gets really emotional. Um, we've seen some really sweet signs out here today. Uh, one, we just talked to um, Chase and Sissy. They're rooting for their mom and it said, go mom, go. We believe in you. We've seen another uh, funny sign that said, those uh, hot pink shorts make you look fast. 
One said, my dad is the fastest man alive. One said, go Kathy, go cards. Um, and, it's, and it's fun because you're seeing these people file in and out as their loved ones cross through the finish line. Uh, but there is one woman who has been here with a cowbell the entire time. And I think it's energy like that that really helps push these runners to the end. Um, I heard Lauren ask somebody earlier, she said, are you cheering for somebody or everybody? And I love to see the people out here who are cheering for everybody because it's really just keeping the crowd alive. In fact, I see someone, I don't think our photographer can pan that far to the left, but someone's dressed up in a giant horse costume out here. You like, you know, those big inflatable dinosaur costumes that kind of go viral. We've got somebody out here wearing a horse. Um, we've got one man was out here in a, in a tuxedo and he said, I just got married. Um, he looked like he was a grandfather and he said 34 years of age and I'm just married. So everybody's just out here having a good time and celebrating these runners today. Eight thousand runners in fact and we've seen so many of them cross the finish line it's really interesting to see too at the very end who gets that last bit of energy and who sprints to the end and who you can tell maybe you know they're really hurting they're ready to be done we've seen a few people go down and cramp up um, we've seen the medics tend to them immediately we know norton uh, sports Healthcare is out here today in full they had about 30 medics all across the race line um, one fun part is the end so if you guys can see past the finish line there's lots of tents and and thousands of people out there that's where they have those tents with a lot of freebies for the runners they're giving away bananas and fruit and um, those metallic blankets that they put on to keep the warmth in their body but then they've also got the bourbon tent where you just saw the winner drinking the old-fashioned they've got samples of uh, Bardstown Bourbon Company and they're also uh, GE Appliances has a big tent up and they're they're cooking up snacks for everybody so there's a good time to be had here at Lynn Family Stadium and then the party continues down at the chow wagon in Festiville at 11 a.m. when that opens on the waterfront so really good time out here we're going to check back in with all of you when race day live coverage continues in just a minute you're watching WLKY.
Hey, welcome back. Two hours, 38 minutes, 29 seconds into the race this morning. You're looking live at some of our runners this morning. We've been checking in all morning long with the folks who have accomplished an incredible feat this morning. We spoke just moments ago with the winner of the marathon, Antonio Marquis. He is a Pop-Tart eater an old-fashioned drinker, and now the winner of the 2022 Kentucky Derby Festival Marathon with a time of 2 hours, 25 seconds, 45. And congratulations to him. We're going to continue to track these finishers and talk to them all morning long. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. Welcome back to our race day live coverage. Our city is in full display this morning and boy is she showing off. Take a live look right now. This is our female leader for the marathon this morning. We checked in just moments ago with our male winner of the marathon, Antonio Marquis. And this right here is our female leader. She is headed back into Kentucky as we speak and across that big four bridge and then make her way towards the finish line there at Lynn Family Stadium. This is no small feat right here. This is quite a, a difficult task as she makes her way up the hill and then, of course, across the bridge at that point uh, doing a fantastic job. We do have crews positioned throughout the race route. We've been checking in with them all morning long. Now we want to check in with our Lauren Adams, who's been doing a great yeah, job yeah. talking yeah. to folks this morning, especially some of the finishers. And Lauren, what are you seeing right there? Are people still happy to be doing this? Hey, good morning to you for a final time, Erica. We've been reporting to you live from the 12 mile mark all day right here at Floyd and Main Street. And it's really incredible because every single person running up and down this stretch of road, right? They have a story, right? One gal stopped and said, hey, it's my 21st birthday. I said, what the heck are you doing running on your birthday? And she said, it's been on my bucket list. And then I just met this couple. You're going to love this. Suzanne, Erica, check this out. This is Rhea, Rhea, Rhea. Rhea. So I got it right. Rhea and Gil. 
and check out their shirts, bride and groom. These two met in a running group, and you tied the knot here in Louisville on Thursday. That's right. That's right. It was amazing. It was perfect. Yeah. Why shouldn't you guys be on a honeymoon? Is the mini marathon or the marathon, is that really the honeymoon? Is this what you knew you were getting into when you married Gil? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, no uh, we dressed in proper attire in the courthouse in between cases, criminal cases. <laughs> and and uh, the judge called us up. Yeah, we, were in our, we had our own little bibs for the dates. So. Yeah. Shout out to Judge Lisa in Louisville because yeah. you guys aren't even from here. No. I know. Okay. How, how special is this that you guys met in a running group and you're coming full circle, your first couple days as a married couple, to cross the finish line together? I think it's pretty amazing it that we're doing this. Yeah, yeah. She was supposed to do the full, but, uh, you know, we just kind of wanted to be together and make it happen. Well, so. I love it. Many years of health and happiness. Can we get a little smooch on TV? Thank you. I was, I was going to say, come on, guys, this is, this is G-rated. We have kids watching in the morning. Well, I I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I am, oh, well, she's beautiful. Congratulations you. to you that. and to you. I just, I love Thank to you. see it. And, and keep on going. They were kind enough, Erica, to stop. Now we're going to really mess up their time. But okay. you guys have already time won. Is forever. His right. time is forever. I love it. You go, guys. Isn't that incredible? I just love being out here. I have such great real estate today. The people that we are meeting, the stories that we are telling, everybody here after a two-year hiatus, they've got a smile on their face, and they are just happy to be here. Reporting for you live this morning, I'm Lauren Adams, WLKY News. Love is a lot on the All race right, route this the morning, though. The Big Four Bridge. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we're right at the top of the Big Four Bridge. We've got the female leader now in the middle of the Big Four Bridge on her way back from Indiana into Kentucky. This is incredible, really. And we're already seeing a lot of the uh, folks who are trying to come from the first half of the race. We've got about five. The marathoners that are getting to the top are running five hour, 15 minute uh, ma uh, marathons, but right now we've got our female finisher. She is dressed in all black. You got to look carefully behind the bikers. You're going to see her and she looks great, guys. I don't know if you can see this, Erica. I mean, this is an incredible feat to be finishing a marathon this quickly. And uh, I can imagine she's going to be sore here in a little bit, but we are so close to the finish line after going up the big four bridge and back down and then back up again uh this this is the final stretch and she is doing great look at she is flying erica yeah she's checking her watch making sure look she's on go. track look at her yes she's doing fantastic doing great. cheering her on look at that her go is, it, it really is yes and i gotta tell you you know what if you have a marathoner running today uh i, I got some things some tips for you that you may want to uh you you may want to uh, at least keep in mind because they are going to be dealing with uh, quite a bit of soreness. So uh, if we can pull up the, uh, the ways to care for your marathoner, this might help you. Uh, expect lots of emotions. Crying is normal. Have an ice bath ready. They could really use it. It helps with swelling mu uh, muscles. Watch for faintness, stumbling. You've really fatigued the muscles over 26.2 miles. Feed them calories. Donuts are their friends the next 36 hours because your body is just crushing calories. It just needs to be replenished. You have burned way too many calories in the last three or four hours and keep them moving. All right. I know they're just going to want to sit down and relax. Wake them up every couple hours. Go for a walk. You want to keep those muscles from getting stiff. So that's just a couple of ways to keep your marathoner feeling a little better later on today. All right, Julie, we're going to go back to you. How's it looking out there? I'm going to call you Coach Mo. You've got all the tips, and I'm going to come to you if I ever start a career in running, which is very unlikely. Anyway, everything's going great here, Mo. We've got Chad, Melissa, Chase, and Sissy here. Melissa just finished the mini marathon, and Melissa, you said you did better than last year. How did it feel? I did do better than last year. Uh, I felt pretty good this year coming out of the pandemic. Uh, it's a little lackluster last year, but um, these guys were down here supporting. This one uh, got up at 6 a.m. to tell me, don't worry about your goal, Mom. Just finish the race. So definitely uh, push me through. And uh, to see them down here for the first time this year, like to really have the signs and push through, it was, it was nice. Give me a little push at the end for sure. Just what mom needed. Chase, tell me a little bit about your sign. I hear they're double-sided. Well, they're both double-sided because I thought if we made two that were double-sided, we would have more room to 
who have more signs and support more. <laughs> have a good run, Mom. And Sissy, tell me what went into your poster. What does it say? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it says, you can do this, Mom, go. And then the other side has flowers on it and says, have a super fast run today. And she certainly did. Guys, thanks for joining us today. Congratulations, thanks. Melissa, on finishing the race. What an accomplishment. Thanks. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. We want to send it over to Andrew Chernoff now at Churchill Downs. Hey, Andrew. Hey, uh, th this place has been a really neat spot to be throughout the entire day because we are in the infield at Churchill Downs. And when people come up here walking through this tunnel, they'll immediately get out their phones. And we've seen a lot of people sort of streaming on Facebook, taking photos. I'm sure this is a very Instagrammable place as well, just because it's the iconic Twin Spires that are right behind our right shoulder. And just this is where it all happens. This is why Derby Week is what it is, is because the Kentucky Derby, which will take place here next Saturday, one week from today. The Oaks is next Friday. Opening night of the meet is tonight. Gates open here at five o'clock. But this place has been so cool because of that. So everyone gets in an extra mood when they get through these gates, but also because of where we're located. The tunnel has a nice little hill that comes up behind me. That thing is brutal, especially in between miles seven and eight. And as soon as they get to the top of this thing, they realize we've gotten through this. This is like climbing Mount Everest, it feels like, on this mini marathon and marathon route. But when they get up here, it's all smiles, smooth sailing ahead, and they know this is well over the halfway point of the mini marathon. So they know it's getting closer and closer to the end. So that's that extra push that you need. I also do love how, uh, Julie, you said Coach Mo. She's been great. She sent me this list of things about marathoning. I'm not a huge marathoner as a runner at all. I'm impressed by these people. She's like, here's what they need to eat at this mile. Here's what they need to drink at this mile. She was like, afterwards, have a giant deep dish pizza because your metabolism or something. I'm like, I'm going to have one of those today for these people. But it's been a really cool atmosphere here. Everyone's been supporting each other. And two awesome LMPD officers have been right here clapping with us. Just a lot of really cool memories here at Churchill Downs. Julie. All right, thank you so much for that, Andrew. We appreciate it. You know, so much excitement out there today. So many people out there cheering on our racers, our runners, our walkers. And one of the coolest things that I feel like as we continue to watch our lead female runner, who's gonna be crossing the, uh, the finish line here in just a bit at the Lynn Family Stadium. One of the coolest things is just to hear all the different causes that people are running for and, and what's motivated them. You know, we've got folks that, that basically, you know, survived a lot of difficulties to get to this point. And obviously when they cross that finish line, it can be very, very emotional. You know, they've worked for months, uh, sometimes a year to get to this, this point. We've got folks that have crossed the finish line that have been in, in accidents, folks that have face major setbacks, folks that are running for a cause they believe in and maybe have lost a loved one recently and they're keeping their loved one's memory alive by running in this race. It's really cool to see all the different um, avenues that have brought people together, all culminating in the Kentucky Derby Festival Marathon and Mini Marathon happening this morning. What a beautiful day. 8,000 people participating in this race, which started at 7 this morning. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more coming up on the the side of the break.
Hey, welcome back. The final moments of our race day coverage and what a morning it has been as we have watched these runners and racers along the route all morning long. You're taking a live look right now at our female leader to cross the finish line for the marathon and what an accomplishment for her. A short time ago, we did see our male finisher for the marathon and he actually had himself a, a little drink there at the finish line, a little celebration and he certainly earned it as have all all of our racers and our runners this morning. We have been live for you for several hours showing you every angle of this race route from the beginning, middle, and end. And what a huge congratulations we want to offer to all of the folks who have participated, who've been out there for hours this morning. And you see people lined up to cheering on these runners. That's been one of the coolest parts to see these families come out, these moms and dads and children and friends holding signs of encouragement, saying you've done a great job, what an accomplishment. Uh, some of the signs funny, some of them a little snarky, but that's okay. If it motivates these racers and these runners to finish strong, then it's definitely well worth it. Congratulations to all of them. You know, we were talking about earlier, this is our, our city on display this morning, and, and what a beautiful way this has been demonstrated. And we've got, you know, all of these beautiful locations and monuments that these runners are going past. They were able to run through Churchill Downs. What an experience there. Uh, the Big Four Bridge as well. And as they're making their way through downtown, no doubt one of the neatest parts is hearing the, che the cheering from the crowd as our runners and our finishers get even closer, saying congratulations, job well done. So many of these folks have trained really hard and long to be able to get to this point. And there she is, folks our female finisher for the marathon about to cross the finish line this morning. You can hear the crowd cheering for her. Look at her go. She is picking up speed as she crosses that finish line there. Congratulations. Take a moment. Take a moment. Take a knee. You've definitely earned it. A lot of these runners having to take a, a few breaths and have some water and uh, catch their breath because what a feat that is to be able to run for that long. This race starting at 7 this morning. So we are now 2 hours 57 minutes into this thing. Take a seat, take a breath. Your city is cheering you on this morning. Fantastic job to all of the racers and the runners. We showed you, of course, the balloon race that happened earlier this morning. We had at least eight balloons get up for that race, and the sun was rising. Beautiful shots there this morning. The very latest, if you want to check out WLKY.com, we'll have it all there. Thank you on behalf of the team for joining us this morning. Have yourself a great afternoon.